Welcome to the first video in the DB Cloud tutorial series. This is a diagram of the typical workflow for sending video from an encoder to a DB Cloud server and then to a YouTube and Facebook channel. However, in this video, we will focus on what's called the first mile. You'll learn the correct settings to enter into your encoder and DB Cloud server to establish a healthy connection. Let's begin with an equipment check. You'll need your NVS34 or NVS33 encoder. You can also use a data video mobile switcher with a built-in encoder like the HS1300, HS1600T, HS3200, or KMU200. Then you'll need a router with internet access. And finally, you'll need a computer. Starting with your router, make sure it's connected to the internet. Then make sure your encoder is connected to the router. The encoder should receive a video source from a switcher or other similar device. And finally, make sure the computer is also connected to the router. Using a web browser, log into your encoder. If you're using a PC, you can use Data Video's Device Finder tool. Or if you're using a Mac, you can use LandScan from the App Store. Please see our other video for an in-depth walkthrough on this step if necessary. Once you've logged into your encoder, we can begin configuring. There are two main places that we'll need to visit, the source page and the operation mode page. Let's start at the source page. Make sure to select the correct input for your video source. If you're using a mobile studio, this part may be blank, but if you're using an external encoder like the NVS33 or NVS34, you'll see a choice between HDMI or SDI. Likewise, make sure to choose the correct audio source. Next, let's visit the stream page or operation mode page. First, let's make sure the stream type is set to SRT. Then let's pick the correct resolution, frame rate, and video bitrate. For many streams, 720p30 is a suitable setting. But if your connection is up to par, you can choose something higher. To know this, we'll need to run a speed test, which will analyze the connection and tell us how strong it is. Here's how it's done. In another tab, visit speedtest.net. Then click the button in the middle of the screen. If your upload speed is about 7 megabits per second or higher, you can run a high quality 1080p 30 stream. If it's lower than that, a 720p 30 stream will be your safest bet. Our speed here shows 39.66 megabits per second, so we're going to choose 1080p 30. Do note that if you're streaming to Facebook, the best choice will be 720p regardless of your upload speed, since that's the maximum resolution supported on their platform. In addition, we can change the default 4 megabits per second to 6 megabits per second for increased quality. In this example, we'll leave it at 4 for now. The final three settings for the encoder are the IP address, port, and latency. To get these, we'll need to go into our DB Cloud server, copy them from a channel, and paste them back here. Here's the login page for this DB Cloud server. To find your login address and credentials, you can reference the welcome email that you should have received when you signed up. Once you log in, you'll see this page, which will show you your channels. If this is the first time logging in, you probably won't see any channels at all. So we'll create a new one and then we'll point your encoder to it. Click here to create a new channel. Now we can start doing some basic settings for the channel. First, let's give it a name. Then let's make sure the input is set to SRT. Then let's go all the way to the bottom of the page and click on save. Make sure you don't forget to click save anytime you make any changes to the setting. In a moment, you'll be taken back to a list of channels. Now you might see a message at the top of the screen that says you need to restart the service for some changes to take effect. Let's click this to apply the settings that we just made. Okay, great. Now we'll go back into the channel and configure some more settings. Let's go to the input menu. 
here we can see two important settings, the IP address or host name and the port. We're going to copy the IP slash host name and port to our NVS encoder settings area. For now, we can click this button here. This will copy the host name information. And for the time being, we'll just remember the port, which is 5020. Let's flip back to the encoder's stream settings menu. Once again, and that'll be located inside operation mode. Here towards the bottom, the encoder is asking for the IP address and the port. So we'll paste the IP address in or host name, which we copied earlier. And for the port, we remembered that it's 5020. So we'll just write that in there. The latency setting uh, can be left at 1000 for now. If you need a real-time stream in the future, you can try lowering the latency, but 1000 is good just to establish the connection. Great, now I click on apply at the bottom to save the settings into the encoder. The encoder is now ready. We can go back to DB Cloud, and I'll show you a couple more important tidbits to get you started. One of the important things to understand is the functionality of the on-off buttons on DB Cloud. Let's go back first to the list of channels by clicking the cloud icon at the top here. It's possible to turn individual channels on and off, and if a channel is turned off, then it'll refuse a connection from any encoder. To make sure your channel is ready to receive the stream from your encoder, make sure this button here is turned on. It'll look like this when it's turned on, and it'll look like this when it's turned off. After we turn it back on, you'll notice the message at the top of the screen appears and to apply the settings, click this link here. Now your channel is ready to receive the stream. To start the stream, you can press the stream button at the front of the encoder. If you're using a mobile studio or KMU200, you can press a similarly placed button to start the stream. Alternatively, you can press the stream button inside the software menu of your encoder. You may have noticed it earlier when you press the apply button. The stream button should be a solid red color to let you know that the connection has been established. Let's go back to the DB Cloud platform and you'll learn another way to verify your connection. If your connection has been successfully made, you'll see a red square next to your channel name. You'll also see this thumbnail showing the video that your DV Cloud channel is receiving from the encoder. For more detailed connection statistics, you can click the stats button at the top of the page. And we can see if the connection is smooth, if there are any dips, and so on and so forth. For this particular connection, we can see that the connection is running steadily at about five, somewhere between five and six megabits per second, and there aren't any strong dips so we can be sure that we made the right bitrate setting on the encoder. Typically, a lower bitrate means a smoother, trouble-free connection at the expense of image quality. Choose the best bitrate for your connection and see what works best for you. Congrats, you've completed the first mile connection. Watch our last mile videos to learn how to forward your video from DV Cloud to a YouTube or Facebook channel or if you're trying to establish a first mile connection using OBS, see our first mile tutorial video using a software encoder.